Hello and welcome to today's Aperio Foundation webinar, Events Management in Unitime. I'm Ian Dolphin, Executive Director of the Aperio Foundation, and I'll be introducing today's event. Aperio is a global community of higher education institutions and commercial affiliates who work to develop and sustain open source software in the service of education. We act as an umbrella for 18 software communities and incubating projects who produce a wide range of software to support learning, teaching, and research. Unitime is a comprehensive open source class examination and events timetabling and scheduling solution in use at many institutions worldwide and is being actively, actively developed in the US and Czech Republic. Today, I'm joined by Zuzana Mullerova and Thomas Muller of Unitime. We're going to provide an overview of recent work to extend Unitime to events management. Before handing over to Zuzana, please note that this webinar will be recorded and made available via the Aperio YouTube channel. Please post your questions in the chat window in big blue button, and we'll get to them as soon as possible. So thanks, and over to you, Susanna. Thank you, and welcome to today's webinar about event management. We will provide an overview of event management, and then Tomáš will show you how, unit, how event management works in unit time. He will make a demonstration. Um, I assume that all of you are familiar with Unitime. So just to put event management into context, uh, Unitime is an open source tool for timetabling in higher education. That's what Ian said. And it has four modules, course timetabling, student scheduling, examination timetabling, and event management. So we will talk about one of the modules of Unitime. Um, event management has been added to unit time after course timetabling to be able to get uh, precise information about the room availability and to manage the room that remains available in classrooms after classes and examinations are timetabled. Uh, the event management can be fully distributed and it does support an approval process. What it does not do in unit time is anything financial. So you do not have billing and other stuff in unit time. And what do we understand by events? Those are actually meetings in a location at a certain time. Uh, in events, you have different types of such meetings. Um, there are class or examination events that get to this event management module of unit time from course timetabling and examination timetabling and you have other events i will introduce those other events later um, so the events that get into events from class or and examination timetabling they as soon as the timetable is published if the academic session is you know in the right state um, the course timetable or examination timetable is translated into individual meetings that are that become a part of the event management module. So in events, you can review timetables. The students can see it, the instructors can see it, anybody can see it. Um, and uh, the users also have access to their personal schedules. They can explore them in many different ways. Then, uh, who works with such a published timetable or schedule? There are timetable managers who use events page to check the course timetable or examination timetable when it's committed. For example, at uh, the Faculty of Education at Masaryk University, the timetable, the departmental timetable managers enter input data for course timetabling. Then the course timetable is centrally created. And then uh, the timetable managers check the timetables, whether they are, whether they meet all the requirements. They check them in the events page, in the event management. But there are users with other roles who also uh, use these event management. There can be students who can see their personal timetables or they can check timetables in many different ways, like room timetable, check 
availability of rooms. Instructors or other authenticated users that do not have a role in unit time or um, an institution may even allow anonymous users to access unit time and the timetable in unit time. Uh, for example, when you link the timetable from another application. Uh, the conditions for uh, the timetables to be seen, as I mentioned, the timetables must be committed. Then the session status must allow for uh, schedules to be published in the event management. There is a small screenshot of, of that part of the screen at the bottom of this slide. And also uh, users have certain roles in unit time and those roles must have events permission. So there are a few conditions to meet to see timetables in the event management. Then the other types of events are so-called other events as opposed to course timetabling and examination timetabling events. Uh, those can be entered through unit time from that event management module and uh, the approval process applies to these other events. So for each such event, the user would add name and type, then the main contact or more contacts and emails. Uh, then there's one or more meetings. Uh, each meeting is defined by the date of the semester of the academic session, time and room. There may be other information entered, such as sponsoring organizations, uh, how many people you expect to attend, whether you require any services, which is one of the recent features, uh, the expiration of uh, the event, like how long um, will you wait for an approval before it gets cancelled, uh, the request for an event, which means a request for a room reservation, essentially, can have an attachment and uh, it has space for additional information. And then uh, the event also keeps the information about the approval workflow in the event history. Uh, what are the other types of events? So those other events than uh, timetabling events. There can be special events. The special events can be entered by anybody, uh, just uh, Unitime will want the person's name, contacts, um, such as email, phone number, and the meetings, like when the event should take place. Then uh, another type are course-related events. The difference from special events is that uh, it cannot be entered by anybody, only people who are allowed to enter course-related events and it checks for student conflicts. So if you have, for example, an event, um, art class students should go to an exhibition, the instructor may come to unit time, may add an event uh, and indicate that it's for this art class uh, and it will check that the event will take place at a time that's not conflicting for the students. And the last type is not available events. And that type is used to indicate that the room is not available at certain times. That can be done only by event managers. I will just ask you, can everybody hear me as I talk? If not, please put down a note. I will notice it. I have the chat window open if there is an issue. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now, what do you need to set up event management when you want to use that part, when you want to enter events, approve events, and so on? You will need event departments. Uh, you can set them up if the academic session status allows for event management. So then you can set up departments that uh, allow for events. So you can have regular departments for course timetabling and you can indicate that they can also do event management. Uh, there need to be rooms associated with event departments. So it, it will essentially tell you which departments are responsible for which rooms for event management. 
And of course, you cannot say that the room cannot be used for event management, because if you say no event management, there is no event management for the room. Uh, then, so those are event departments. You also need event managers. Those are users with event manager role. It's usually related to one or more departments. If you know course timetabling, it's similar. You, one user with this role can have one or more departments. Uh, the event manager has a special privilege. He can delegate other users from his or her own department to help him with event management. So he can say that this instructor will be able to approve events for these rooms. Um, it's possible to set up further properties. Uh, you can set up even event confirmation emails in the application configuration page. That means that uh, the events are not locked in unit time, but when there is a new event added, there will be an email to the departmental event manager of that room saying that, oh, look, you need to approve a new event. Uh, or when anything changes, there will be emails to the contact email addresses. Uh, you can uh, allow users, to, well, allow event managers to edit or approve past events if you set up the permissions that way. The permissions can also be set up to allow for double booking. So it means that the event manager would be able to add another event to a room even when the room is already full. And it also allows for class or uh, for the modification of class or examination events. This is useful, for example, if you have a math course for the whole semester, but the third week of semester, there will be an event at that college and you need to reschedule that one class only on the third week. You can take that class and move it to another time and location through event management. So that's what needs to be set up for events in unit time to work. Um, then uh, there's another point of view of what you can set up uh, for the events to work. So you can set up event status. That's what users can do, who can approve, who can request events, who can approve events. And it's always set up for a pair of department and room type. So, for example, you say who can request uh, events for classrooms at the computer science department. Uh, and you can always overwrite such status on, uh, on a room itself. So, in general, the classrooms for computer science departments may be requested by any authenticated user. But this particular room, this special computer lab can be only requested by event manager. So somebody has to contact the event manager to request that. Um, there are some examples of who can request, like kind of authenticated users request, departmental users, event managers. And uh, you can either require no approval, or you may have automatic approval for some departments and room types or the event manager can approve. And as I said, it can be the event manager or someone that the event manager delegates to be able to do that. Um, other properties to set up on a uh, room or uh, as a part of the event status are event message. You can see it in the screenshot. That is a screenshot, the small picture is a screenshot from a room detail, well, edit room page. So you can see event department, event status, and you can add event message that will be added to any event requested in that room. Uh, another part is break time. You can indicate how many minutes uh, you will need to evacuate the room after the event. So for example, if you need to clean up after the event, you can say that you will need 30 minutes, that no one else should use the room 
for additional 30 minutes after the end of your event. And you can indicate for the whole academic session when the room is unavailable. So there are two ways. If you need to indicate unavailability for the whole semester or whole academic session, you do it here through event availability. Or if you have just one time unavailability, you can uh, put in that not available event. Any questions so far? It's, uh, I know that for someone who has been using events, it's rather basic. It will be more interesting when Tomáš comes to the demo. So if not, I'll continue. Um, then there are roles and permissions related to event management. Uh, the roles, again, I talked about them a little bit already, but uh, I would like to add a few more details. The roles that can work with event management are event managers. So they can do about anything. They set up event statuses, know if it's room availabilities, of course, only for their departments. Uh, they can create events on behalf of other users. So they can fill in the contact information as if they were a student from that department or someone else. They can approve or reject events or cancel events and delegate roles. We talked about that. Then uh, uh, users with the instructor's role can see their class or examination timetables. And what I didn't say before uh, is that they can also see the enrollments. So when they click on the classes they teach, they cannot see it for other instructors. But for the classes they teach, they will see what students are enrolled into those classes. Of course, um, this is possible if you have student class enrollments in unit time, if you, for example, do student scheduling in unit time. Uh, the instructors may also be allowed to cancel or reschedule individual class meetings. So you might allow instructors to move that one class of mass because of that big event in the third week of semester. Or you might set up the permission so that it's only event manager who can do it or nobody can do it. Um, the instructors can request special and course related events. The event manager could request any type of event so they could also set up the not available event instructors only have access to special and if allowed then course related events and then the other role worth mentioning are students uh, and possibly other old authenticated users the students can see their schedules so if you have student scheduling in unit time they will really see the particular classes into which they should go. So the, the exercise into which he should go, he needn't see all the exercises of a course. Um, and students and other authenticated users can request special events. They do not have access to course related events and they do not have access to uh, not available events. Oh, that's for roles and permissions. Now, uh, the approval process is really simple. Someone, for example, a student or a secretary or manager at a department adds a new event. The event is immediately in a pending status. And the manage event manager gets the email, oh, someone requested an event. Uh, then the manager can approve or reject the event or they can cancel the event. They can also inquire about the event. They can have further questions about what's going on or what did you mean and what do you really need um, that it does not uh, impact the status of the event. Um, the owner, if the approval takes too long or if they change their mind, they can also delete the event. Or they can indicate that, okay, I need to know in two days, if you don't let me know, this event will expire, I don't need it anymore, and it gets cancelled. So it's really simple, it's pending, and then it's either approved, rejected, or cancelled. 
uh, when the event is pending, the room is reserved and it cannot be used by other events, by other special events, but it can be used for class and examination timetabling. So it does not block classes or exams from taking place there. When it's approved, uh, the space in the room is blocked. So it's also blocked for classes and examinations and it cannot be deleted, it can only be canceled. Uh, if, of course, if the event is rejected or canceled, the room is not blocked anymore. Um, the event may have one or more meetings. So somebody can reserve a room or request the room reservation, the event for Monday at 10 and Friday at 12. Those are two separate meetings. And you can do approval or rejection on individual meetings. So you can approve Monday meeting, but you might reject the Friday meeting. Um, as I said, the manager can inquire about the event without changing the state and all the changes are tracked in the event notes. There are a few more features you can use uh, in the events. There are sponsoring organizations which is kind of a contact, but uh, you can have, uh, you set up sponsoring organizations in unit time that's widely used at Purdue University. And then anybody from the sponsoring organization can request an event, indicate that it is for this organization, and then the events will be searchable by that organization. Uh, another feature are standard notes. Uh, it's often the case that some rooms have special treatment. For example, uh, you want to provide instructions for, uh, the, for the visitors to the room or for the people who will enter it, uh, how to behave or what special treatment the room needs. Or you might uh, for that, there are the standard notes. They, they are written already and the event manager cho chooses one of the standard notes to atta attach to inquiry or approval or just to the event. Uh, the standard note may include HTML tags. So often that's, there's a link to a form that needs to be filled in, such as I understand that I need to take care of the equipment and etc etc uh, and these standard notes that can be added to events can be global so anybody any event manager of any department will see the note and can use it or they can be academic session dependent uh, for example when there's an academic session for each college at a university or for each campus at a university uh, the academic session dependence means that uh, one campus will see this set of notes and another campus will see a different set of notes. Or you can have standard notes that are department dep dependent. So if you have special treatment of labs, you don't need to offer that note to all the other departments that have no labs. Uh, a feature that has been recently added are the service providers. The person who requests an event can uh, request uh, provide a service. Uh, there is a predefined set of services such as catering, video recording, security and so on. And uh, when it is requested and the event is approved, uh, the providers of these services are automatically uh, notified that there's a new event that requires these services. Uh, again, there's uh, Gratuity. Uh, the service providers may be defined for anybody, that's the global level, or for a department, or they can be associated only with particular rooms. For example, if there is catering, not all rooms allow for catering, so you cannot request catering in a, com in a computing lab. You won't allow eating there. Events can be searched by services too. So they can be searched by many different things, including organ sponsoring organizations and service providers. 
And we will move to the more interesting part, to Tomáš showing the demo of how events work in reality. So if you have any questions for me, please ask them now. Um, I will read the answer. Course-related event check for students' conflicts with committed classes, not with modified classes, nor, nor with other course-related events, right? Um, I will ask Tomáš to answer this one too during his demo. If that's I okay. can I can ask the answer that right away. Okay. Please do. The, the, the conflicts should be checked with all the meetings that are approved on the class events, as well as for course-related events, but only for those that are marked that they, they require attendance. When you are setting up a course-related event, and I can show that up in the demo, you can say whether you expect all the, the students to, to attend or not. So only if the, there is a course-related event that requires attendance, the other course-related event, if you are setting it up, would, would show the conflicts for those students. So let me try to share my screen. Yeah, thank you. I will pause the presentation to you. Thanks. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen, I, I did not see the button there. Yeah. Okay, it's yeah, screen one. Something's happening. So can you see my screen? Yes. Good. Well, I, I can. I... Yes. And others, right, they can. Yeah. Well, good. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I should probably enable my video as well so that. OK, so I'll probably start with the main page for the events which is the events page where you can see all the events that exist in unitime there is a lot of and you can also request events from this page there is a lot of functionality in there one thing that's probably important to to mention is that all events in unitime are related to a particular academic session so even if there is an event has to be associated with with, a part, with, with the academic session it has to be within the dates of, of that academic session. So sometimes if you need to create something that's overlapping multiple academic sessions, you actually need to create multiple events, but it's fairly rare, fortunately. And it allows us to, like everything else with, within Unitime, have a lot of data that are related to a particular academic session. So one thing that's the very important on this page is that we have filters where you can filter for, for which academic session you are looking at the events and you can filter what events you want to see and in what rooms. So if you are looking stuff up, it's, it's easy. You can see, you can filter them by type. So you just can see class events, examination events, those special events or course related events. You can see all of them, just your events those that are approved, not approved. Some of the fun, uh, some of the filters depend on what, who is looking, like the administrators or event managers have, have more capabilities than ordinary users. If there are service providers set up, I can, and there are actually some events using them, I can filter by, by the service providers or by the sponsoring organization. I can filter by, by people who requested it, look for events in a particular set of dates, or just at a particular day of week. And I can combine these so I can say, I, I just want to see class events that are, let's say, on, on Tuesday or Friday. And it would show me just, just those. The other thing that, that's, that's neat is that you can either look it up on the filter, you can just, just type it in. So if I just, start typing in Thursday, it automatically 
suggests me that I can filter by, by, by Thursday. Or if I start typing in class, then it's class, class event. Or if I type in type, I can choose which type I want to see. I want to see course related and special events. We don't have too many of those at the moment in there. And it's it's similar for, for the room filter. There as you can see by department, by the type of the room, by the equipment of the room, or if there are any room groups. And even the equipment, which is not the case in the demo, could be split into different groups. So you can see seating tie as seating arrangement as a different type of a feature than to the recording capabilities or the size of the blackboard. You can filter by 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 uh, by buildings, by size of the room. So I can and I, again you can easily type it up so I can see just classrooms. Oh. No course related event in classrooms right now. So let's get back. And maybe just filter it by one building. When I, when I see some events, I can see them in, in a grid. As a list of events, or it could be split by individual meetings, which could be useful for, for some of the sorting. purposes because then I can just sort them by date and I can see, okay, my next meeting is this and the next meeting that. One thing I, I want to mention is that there is a bit more function to the, to the, to the grid because whenever I'm looking at a particular week, or at a particular room, the grid shows the, the data in a more structured way when it's it's split by, by the building, uh, by the room. So I can see for, for in this particular week, which is what, what event is in each of the rooms. And it's it's similar if I'm showing all the weeks, but just if I select a room so I can see in a room what classes there are, you can see that there it's, it's, it's class events. So you can see that there is some some holiday on this this Monday and and and, and the next Monday. So one of them is probably a fall break, and the other one is Thanksgiving. And the exams show in the last examination week, and I think there are some evening exams at the bottom. If you mouse over an event, it shows you more details, and it kind of enlarges that 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 event, so you can. See what's what's written on it too. And even like from here, you can actually start requesting an event. So you can just create some some meetings, and then if I click at event, it would get automatically populated with with these these little boxes I I did put in. Uh, I, I'm just not creating an event right now yet. <laughs> there is a slight, well, oh, I forgot one thing. It is the, the, the list of events. There is, you can see uh, some some data in the table, like the name of the event, type of the event. If it's, if it's a class event, you can actually see that whether it's a lecture, the instructional type, the title of the course, when it takes place. But there are more fields that you can enable. So if some people are interested in the limits, the times, you can you can see uh, would it approve? When was the last change? You can you can see all of those in in here as well. One thing that's also kind of important is that we can have essentially two times on each event, on each meeting. There is a published time, which is the time that we show to, to people that's when, when, the, when the, the event actually takes place. So for instance, for classes, this class takes two hours, one hour and 50 minutes. 
whereas the the class the allocated time is is the blocking of the room so the room is is blocked for all 120 minutes so there is enough time no there is nothing created in the room in those those min 10 minutes where the students need to leave the room and some other students need need to come in and you can you can see that in in the grid as well that this little time at the bottom that's the the, the tier down time that's the difference between when uh, this is the difference between the, the published time and, and the allocated time and it's usually just at the end of, of the period but uh, of the class but you can set it up beforehand especially for the special events like if it's a, a big event and you need to have the room reserved half an hour before it actually takes place you, you can do it as well you can set up you can provide a setup time of 30 minutes so that the room would get blocked half an hour before the event actually takes place and you may have another half an hour at the end of the event so that you uh, cleaning up you can clean up the room and, and such what's also important is that these, these tables provide nice exporting capabilities you can export everything or the table or the grid or the, the tables to PDF, CSVs, Excel, or iCalendar format. And actually, if I'm doing the iCalendar, I can either download the iCal file or I can get a URL that I can put into my, my calendar tool and it will automatically refresh, update the, the calendar. I can subscribe to, to that URL. And actually behind the scene, you can generate these URLs for others, for, for the CSV feed, for the PDF feed, for even the, the JSON format. So, and we have some documentation for that if, if you are interested. So essentially, and it's it's based on, on the filter setting. So now I have a schedule for, for, this, uh, for all the classes in the Eduk building, if I set up, just one particular room, I can get a feed of all the classes in a particular room. This is being used by, by some institutions to feed some of those little devices that are next to the room so that they know what's happening in that room today or during the week. So I think that's, that's for the events. There is also a room availability page which essentially shows similar data but it's more useful if you need to to look up stuff if you need to see okay i have a week during which i need to set up an event that could take any time between let's say 8 a.m and noon and it needs to be in a classroom in that's in a classroom that's in the edoc building let's say now i can see a grid with this one room at a time, I can sort them, they're, let's say, by capacity. So the largest one goes first. No, this is the, the smallest first. So if I if I click it one more time, it, it reorders that by, by that. This is this is the our online demo. So we have leaded tiny rooms because we only have like 20 students in the program. So it's all everything kind of ties together. But yeah, I can I can see those rooms in that particular time frame so i've selected a week between eight and noon and i can see what's in those rooms at that time so i can see okay i could have an event in here or well this room is, is completely available but well it's it's quite packed in in these other ones or if i if i have just one day it's even easier because then i get it on just one table with, with the rooms as columns And I, again, from here, I can just select a particular time and hit at event, and it would automatically get those times selected in those rooms. Mm 
the other functionality of the events and this is what 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 Zuzana mentioned is because we have classes in there and exams in there we can also use it to display schedules to students and it's it's especially useful for those cases when you can cancel particular class meetings or move some of them into different times because this allows us to actually see individual meetings usually if you have a class schedule it just says this class happens every second monday this time in this room and that's it and that you can see on the events timetable or there are some special pages that just show for instance a personal schedule or for students there is an ex it could be an examination schedule page which just shows their exams and in here it's it's a similar page the difference is that i can also filter by resource so I'm, if i select a resource like subject I can put in a subject area or a particular course so I can see just classes from the CS subject area let me select all or I can filter down and see just CS 101 courses or I can see all or classes or exams for a, of a particular curriculum or a curriculum and, and classification I can see them in a grid. I can see all classes of a department. What's kind of in, nice is the, the personal timetable and it's that ordinary users can just see their schedule, but administrators or when it's allowed, I can look up a person. So this is one of our instructors in this problem and I can see a schedule for that instructor and if the, the instructor has classes I can see classes with the instructor has some some exams I can see those exams too if the instructor has or the person in general has some some classes as main or is listed on, on some events as main contact or additional contact I would see those in here as well and for, for instructors, they can actually go in and click on a class and they can see their class which with all the meetings and all the students in here. And if there have if, if there were any any conflicts for those students, that this table would, would show those conflicts as well. And when allowed, the, the instructor may be also able to say, okay, but this this particular Wednesday I'm attending a conference, so I'm going to, to cancel this. This meeting, I can provide some note, let notification or just cancel it. So now when I look at the schedule or even here, I can see that there is no, no class on, on Wednesday, September 1st. And if the students would look at up their schedule or get that through the iCalendar feed, the September 1 Wednesday meeting would disappear for this class for them or I can set up a, a new makeup class which I actually need to click on edit event and add a new meeting for this class and so on so I think I've talked enough about what, what I can see in the events now let's start creating some events so one of the possibilities you, you already have some some times some rooms so, or you, you you start from the room availability and you select some time and click on at event if i just go to menu and just click on events at event i'm just starting from scratch again i can create an event for a particular academic session i need to provide a name if there is if there are sponsoring organizations i can select one of them we currently don't really have relation between sponsoring organizations and and the user requesting the event but since all, every sponsoring organization has an email and they get all the notification about the events they can easily see okay this student is requesting an event for the organization if that event student has no affiliation they can they can they can voice that usually that, that doesn't happen really Often, on the other hand, for instance, at Purdue University, we require that all students that are requesting an event, they must provide a reason or they have to select a, a sponsoring organization for which they are, they are doing the request. 
we can define whether it's a special event or the course related event or in case of event managers or administrators i can also create an unavailability just mark some space in the room that's, that's not available without providing name of the event or having the approval process so let's set up a course related event and since i'm uh, now accessing it as a manager i can set up provide who is the the main contact so i can look up a person who is on behalf of of whom i'm creating the event in case of students or other registered users or instructors if they click on at event it's automatically populated with their contact information and they cannot request event on behalf of someone else so i can create it for myself and i if if, if if needed i can provide additional people on on the event they will also get notified about the event and it will show on on their their schedule this is mostly useful if there are some multiple people organizing the event or there are like instructor is getting uh, setting up some help session and there is also a, a couple of tas need to be present because it would not show up automatically on the ta schedule it would show up in, in on the on the student schedule because they would be linked through the the course or class related to the course event so they can do it through the more contact the people look up you can just type in the name email university id of, of the person if, if you know it this looks up through the, all the tables we have in unit time students instructors timetabling managers past pre pre previously provided even contacts but it could be also linked to an ldap directory so if, if i type in a name it could go from university directory and i can find a person through there or i can just provide additional email address and this these are the, the services so if there are any services defined i can just click on i may i may need a catering service and there could be some this with each service there could be some some description provided and when you select the service the description will show and this description again can have html text so there could be a link to a form that you have to fill in and attach attach to the, the request for, for the event. I can provide some additional information. And for event managers, this is simplified by the fact that you are typing in the same message every time. You can put, put it in as a standard note, and then you just click on standard note, select the, the note you want, and just hit, and it, it puts it in. And you can put more, more in there, so I can select a different one. And it's it's there is additional information. We have the capability of providing expiration dates. This is mostly useful for event managers if they are creating an event for someone who is on the phone and they don't know yet. Okay, I'll just block the room for you, and if you want to that that event, just let me know in in, in a day. So I put in an expiration date, just making sure that the room is blocked. And if I don't approve the event in the next day or until the expiration date, it will get automatically canceled. So that the space is released and someone else can, can get it. And for the course related event, it's, it's, there is additional piece when I can select which courses or classes this, this event is related to. And it does not need to be just one class. It could be a list of courses or a list of classes. So let's take a CS course and let's say just students of the first lecture. The, the other fields are automatically populating. So if I select a subject area, it puts in all the courses in that subject area and so select a course. It selects if I can select the whole offering. If there is a cross list, I can just select the course. Not So only students that sign up into the offering through this course. Or if there are multiple configurations, I can set up the course. Uh, I can set up uh, the, the event only for students that attend the online configuration or just the traditional configuration of the course. I can set up a part or I can select a particular section. And when I do that, I can see what students 
will will attend or for which students it applies and this is this is the required attendance flag that that there was a question about so if i hit this and the, the minute the, this event is approved any other course related event or even a class event that has a conflict would show those those conflicts uh, on, on the enrollments and i need to provide the meetings and it's to have to have all the possible capabilities so, so you can set up recurring meetings and such we've ended up with actually having all the dates of the semester available and you can just put in what what, what the dates you want your meeting on so if you want all the Tuesdays, you can just select this Tuesday here and Tuesday here and Tuesday here and Tuesday here. And if you can see by, by default, it only it, it has some. It iterates through the possibilities. So first time I click on it, it selects all the Tuesdays that are in the uh, during the, the class times before the between the start of the classes and end of the classes that are not marked as holidays. If I click the second time, it also selects the holidays. And if, I, if I click the next time, it unselects everything. And even if I'm doing it with, with all the days of the week, it selects just the working days, Monday to Friday, without the holiday. Next time, it selects everything but the holiday. Next time, it selects everything on that, on that month. And if I click again, it this selects everything. So it tries to be a bit more clever about about what what you are selecting then you need to know when it starts and ends so let's say we have eight hour it starts at eight and i can every time i can either select or i can type in or i can type in like two hours and it automatically selects two hours from from 8 a.m I think I can even do something like 75 minutes or 80 minutes, even if it's not by, by default, the suggestions only go every 15 minutes, but I can do every five in here. So let's say 80 minutes and I can look up a room in here as well. So I can just say any any event room would do or I can filter them out like I need fixed seating so it will only show me rooms that are event rooms with fixed seating which are or with some something in them so let's me just drop the fixed seating I think there are some classrooms that don't have any classes in them or special rooms some event rooms that and now I can actually go in and select which rooms. So, so possibly each Tuesday I can select a different room based on the availability, or I can decide, okay, there will not be this Tuesday because there is no room. Or I can just hit the, the, the building and it selects all the all the all the Tuesdays in that room for the ordinary users. It's all the all the all the times in that room that they don't have any conflict. The event managers or administrators can have the permission that they can actually set up something that's double booking that's over that creates a conflict. But ordinary users can, cannot do that. So if I select a room and there are some some of the, 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 the slots have some classes or some other events in them already, it would not allow me to select those. One neat, neat function in here is also that as I'm looking at that, I can sort them by name, by availability. So it would show me the, 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 the Tuesdays that has mo most rooms available first. Those other ones would, would come later. Or I can actually swap the axis so I would see Tuesdays here and rooms here. I can I can truly truly pay this that and now I can sort the rooms by size or by the availability by the name. I can also expand those so I can actually see what's in there. 
that, that that's conflicting with with what I'm saying, setting up. And now when I select when I've selected the slots, I get the meetings, and I can click on add meetings and create more. So if I need some meetings that have different lengths than the others, I can do that. I can also now when I have the meetings, I can set up the the provide the setup times and this I can do either for all the meetings or just similar ones, uh, just some particular ones. So let's say I need 10 minutes at the end. So now we allocated time, it's 8, 20, 8 to 9, 20, but the publish would be 8 to 9. I can do 20 minutes at the end, so it's 8 to 10, but I have 20 minutes afterwards to, to, to vacate the room. There is also the capability to provide some additional contact information for, for particular meetings. This is mostly useful for, for classroom floor for classes. Then you need to like if there is a, a makeup meeting for a class, you can indicate who, who, who will be teaching that. So and you can see that as I have created an event that's actually taking quite some time, that there is actually some conflicts for, for my two students in there. So I may need to choose a different time or just be happy with that. So since we are starting to run out of time, let me just create the event. And I wanted to show you there is an email that I'll get. So whenever there is a change to the event, there is an email generated that's sent to the main contact, to the additional contacts, to the email addresses provided, to the email of the sponsoring organizations and to the contact information for the requested services. But for the requested services, we are only sending emails at the moment that when the, the meeting, that when there is a meeting that's approved. So it does not, they, and in each meetings there, in each event, we have a section that shows what has been done to the event. And there is a section that shows how the event looks right now. There is the, the information and there is the history which shows us what, what has been done to the event. And I should, well, no, <laughs> different. So I have the, the event created. And now well, let's meet, it, it, that's, that's essentially it for, for the students or the ordinary users. As an uh, administrator, I can go in and approve the event. I can either do it from the detail page or I can go from here and say, okay, I want to see all events that are not approved. I can also see all events that waiting my approval, but that's for the event managers. I'm currently logged in as administrator, so it will not return anything. So let's just see all events that has not been approved. And I can either do a bulk of them, just select them all and just do an approve and approve everything, reject everything, stuff like that, or I can, just do one event or look at the meetings and select particular meetings, do, do it from here, or I can click on the event and do it from the detail page. Let's say I just want to select all of them, but the last one, and I would approve these. And I can I can do all those stuff that that's, uh, Susanna mentioned. So it's in pending state, so I can approve, I can cancel, I can reject. Or I can inquire about them. It essentially just sends an email to the student to the to those contacts, so that they, they know that they need to provide some 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 additional information that they can go in or they need to reschedule or something without actually being it cancelled first. And when I'm approving, I can see what what I'm approving, and there are also I can put in a note, or if there are standard notes, I can just select one. Or or more, and it automatically gets in there. I can provide an attachment. So like if it's an inquiry, it's usually, okay, you need to fill in the form. So here is the form, I can attach the for form to, to this. And 
hit approved. They are approved with the date and you can see in the notes the progression so that the, the event was created and there had been some meeting approved and let's say I'll just cancel the last one. So now the last one is canceled and there is a message about that and then should be getting additional emails. So there, there is another email that the following meetings have been approved and the current status of the event shows that there is still one pending. And there is another email that shows that the last meeting has been canceled. And it always shows the, the whole history in there. Susanna, did I miss anything? There is a lot of about the setup which I could be talking to, but. <laughs> Well, if you I have a question in the chat, mm -hmm. is it possible to set this students are required to attend this event true as default? I'm not sure. Let me check if we have that. I, I don't think so at the moment, but if, if not, it could definitely be. Well, this is the confirmation we we'll get we need to get it. No, I don't think we have a default for that at the moment. We are running out of time. Are there any other questions that anyone has? Thanks very much for a really comprehensive presentation but both of you that was great mm -hmm. oh, there's another question in the chat have you ever thought about a kind of assistant or solver to suggest a new meeting when it comes to edit a class event or class related event to deal with students conflicts based on enrollments there have been some question about it in the past but our current experience is that usually when someone needs to reschedule a class especially if it's a class or, or a particular meet just just a meeting of a class they already know what what when when, when they have time for that what we do have is when you are rescheduling the, the whole class when you are using the class assignment page it will actually show you what are the possible times and how many conflicts are in each of the possible time slots. So if I am maybe on, on one of the classes, if I just click on, no, I have to lock it first. If I'm assigning from here, I can see there are two student conflicts if it's moved from 9.30 to, 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 to this time or one conflict in here. And if I actually click on that, it would show me where the conflicts are coming from. But this is when I'm moving the, the whole class. We currently don't have that for, and I think what, what there has been more is actually a request when you are setting up a course related event. If you care about students to have some, some way of getting suggestions of what are the possible times. If I just know I need two hours on this week, what is what are the possible times when students of this course have have time and they don't have anything else? But yeah, we don't have that functionality at the moment. Uh, there's one last question in the chat. We better call it quits after this. Questions about allowing instructors to edit a class event. They can edit only event connected with classes they teach, right? Is it possible to connect permissions with specific department? but keep the global role instructor um, and then note we take it from the LDAP directory. Currently our instructors can only edit classes that they can teach or they are marked as coordinators for the course. We have we have either instructors on a class level or coordinators on the course offering level. So coordinators can also may be allowed to edit classes what I could envision is that you would have to create a different role for them, which is 
more than event manager, well, less than event manager, but more than, than individual students in the individual users like instructors or so you would have a group of people that have permissions to modify classes for a particular department all of them but yeah, currently and it's from from the LDAP directory client if you are logging into unitime you we get only the external id of of the person and we match the role with with the data we have in unitime so we have a record we have need to have an instructor record in unitime student record in unitime or the roles in unitime this is mostly because of the the granular structure of departments and the academic sessions because like you may be allowed to do something for the next fall but not in in for an academic session that's already in the past and, and such So did, did okay. I answer that, that question? <laughs> so there are certainly some possibilities how to allow other student, other personnel than just instructors to be able to modify classes. And um, let's take this really as the last question. We have one global role. Is it possible to give permission to instructors only from one department? If the role is marked as departmental, it should only apply to personnel from that department. However, I'm not entirely sure how the permission checking would, what would do at that point because it, I think it depends on uh, whether it's an instruction, whether there may be an additional permission, but we can, we can take that offline. But it's there are some possibilities with the permissions to allow start like I think it would be, it should be possible to set up unit time so that users at the departmental level can edit classes of their department but not from other departments. Right, that's very clear. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we're a little over time there, but thanks for a really comprehensive overview. Really appreciated both Thomas and Susanna, and thanks for attending. See you soon at a future Aperio webinar, I hope. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.